hey what is it guys welcome back to this tutorial on mobile game um, last time we actually created a shop that would keep track of which skin we bought and right now we don't have any money so I'm not gonna buy anything but basically this works in this episode we're actually going to start uh, creating some game mechanics well, maybe not a game mechanics but at least getting inside of our level and getting everything ready to actually play so if we click on the level selection and we go inside of scene 1 which is level 1 this is what we get now this is not really really fun and I think we need some kind of gameplay here so we are going to do just that this episode we're going to just get everything set up everything ready and um, we will also add a button to go back to the other scene so to the the main menu scene in case our player wants to go back and maybe shop or something all right so let's do that in this episode we are going to open up the scene folder and go inside of our first level mine is called one underscore training remember this is the same exact name as our thumbnail inside of the resource folder all right so we're going to right click in our hierarchy and we are going to create a UI panel why not I always like to create panels so let's zoom on that put our scene in 2d and have a look at this very panel now so I'm thinking about having the back menu up here so on the top right uh, this way we don't you don't actually accidentally hit it while we're actually playing the game so say you're holding your phone in your hand um, you shouldn't be hitting the top uh, top right side of your phone that's what I believe at least so I'll be putting my back button up here and maybe have some kind of confirmation so we'll be putting a really really small I want I want to have really minimal UI because I don't really like having UI when I'm playing on phone game I like being able to see everything that's going on in the game and just maybe have a small pause button yeah that, that'll be it so we'll have a small pause button uh, top left and when we click it we have the option to go uh, either back to our game or back to the menu so that's what we'll be doing actually so let's uh, let's go ahead and remove that canvas actually not canvas but panel now we're left with our canvas I am going to right click on this go on UI and add a button now this button is going to be say um, what about 50 by 50 or is that too small let's make it 75 by 75 and when we actually build the game we'll, we'll have a better feel of uh, this button when it's on our device okay now let's make sure we anchor this top right so I'll click on the anchor menu here click here then hold shift click here as well so my pivot point is also top right and as for the position in X I'll be putting minus um, 25 and also minus 25 in Y as well so we have this nice offset okay now let's actually modify it a little bit um, I'll, I'll leave the button like that for now and I'll maybe just change the color so maybe have like some kind of yellow I'm not sure and as for the text I'll just be putting like a pause button something like that oh not like that so two pipes this doesn't work okay maybe just type in pause <laughs> okay of course all of this art, all of the uh, player skins, they're all really just temporary because we want to get things working before we actually apply the art. And uh, I haven't done the art just yet, so that's why. Okay, so this is our um, menu, not menu, this is our UI for the game scene. And that is going to be pretty much it, actually. Now we need some kind of level manager. If you remember correctly, if we go back inside of the main menu, we have a game manager that um, actually persists through the load screen so if we hit play go in level selection level 1 as you can see the game manager is still here so we'll need some kind of uh, manager but only for our level so this one is going to contain say uh, where exactly we need to go and also going to contain uh, how how long have we been in this level uh, how many coins have we gathered inside of this level so everything related to the a game session itself so the the actual actual session you know actual level you're playing so the game manager just take care of everything uh, the game does and the level manager take care of, of everything the level does okay so let's actually do that here we are going to right click not right click we're going to create a new empty game object this one is a level manager so let's rename it to level manager as always I like to position it at the origin of the world give it a little icon just for 
the sake of seeing it. And I will be creating a new C Sharp script as well that goes with it. So level manager. Okay. Make sure you add it to this object. Oh, mine didn't work for some reason. Oh, I put a space here. Okay. Alright, so now we can actually go inside of our script. We are going to start by creating a really simple function that uh, that is going to return us to the menu. So let's actually clean it up like we always do. We are going to include up here using Unity Engine dot scene management. This way we can go ahead and create ourselves a public void and uh, our function is going to be called to menu just like this. Alright, so uh, this is going to send us back to the menu, so simply type in scene manager dot load scene and now the name of your menu scene. In my case it would be main menu as we can see here inside of our scene folder. So type it the same exact way as you named it. And we are pretty much done with this for now. Okay. Now we could go ahead and put this button uh, on the to menu and it would just simply return us back to the actual uh, main menu. But what I want to happen uh, when we actually press this button is I'd like to just stop everything that's going on in the game. So an actual pause and then display a additional menu that is going to give us more options such as a return back to the main menu and maybe resume to the game and maybe just show the timer and the uh, stats of the level so you've collected five points or something of the sort. So basically we're going to create another uh, menu inside of... Oh, actually we're going to create a pause menu, that's what I'm trying to say. So let's actually do that right now. We are going to right click on our canvas. I'll go ahead and create a panel and I will center it uh, in the middle of my canvas. So Make sure you remove the stretch. I will be putting the uh, the anchor in the center and also the pivot point. So by holding shift, clicking, pivot point is now also centered. And we will be putting this on something like uh, 750 by 250. Okay. So this is the, the menu we are not going to see at all unless we press on pause. So this is the pause menu. Let's go ahead and type it in pause menu and that is going to be pretty much uh, that's going to be pretty much it all right so uh, I'm not going to modify the image or stuff like that a little bit later on of course you could be adding a nice panel a custom made panel that you designed yourself but as for now this is going to do the job and I will be adding a uh, a button here so right click on your pause menu add a button and this one is going to be uh, exit. So basically go back to the main menu or we could be calling it main menu as well. So I'll change the button name, main menu button and also change the size for say 150 by 150. Okay, so that's going to be the first button. Of course, the layout is not great and uh, we could be doing better in terms of art but I haven't really decided on uh, how exactly I want to position this inside of my panel. So right now we're just going to code the functionality and after that we'll give it some kind of good look. Okay, so the main menu button, I want it to be binded to uh, the two menu function that we just made. So basically we are going to drag and drop the level manager inside of the unclick uh, event. Actually, you need to press on the plus sign and then drag and drop this level manager inside of the little field down here. We now have access to all of its component. If we expand it, that's pretty much all we need. So uh, transform, level manager, and also the game object, which is inherited by default. Inside of the level manager, we created a public function called it to menu. So we're going to be clicking on that. And now whenever we press on this button, it's going to return us back to the main menu. We are also going to create a public game object that we are going to call pause menu. Now pause menu is pretty much just this object over here and the reason we want a reference to it is so we can turn it off or on. So basically we're going to create another function so a public void 
toggle pause menu and whenever this is called then we are simply going to uh, toggle on or off this very pause menu so I'll say pause menu dot set active now set active actually takes in a boolean parameter so you could tell him are you going to be on or are you going to be off so basically inside of that uh, since we only call toggle pause menu without a boolean parameter we don't know if it's either on or off so we're going to have to check right inside of that actually so we're going to check right inside of our parameters we're going to say pause menu dot active self now this is going to return the actual state of the pause menu so if it is uh, if it is visible then it's going to be true and if it is not visible it's going to be false so what we do is uh, pause menu dot set active and then we're going to say not this value so if it's on we're actually going to turn it off and vice versa so that's uh, going to be pretty much it for this code let's go ahead and link our pause menu button to that very function so on our pause button I'll actually call it pause button while I'm at it so on our pause button I'll go in the unclick event I'll press on the little plus sign drag and drop my level manager in there then I'll go seek inside of its functions there is a function called toggle pause menu if it is public now if you don't see yours that is because your function needs to be on public all right oh one thing I'd like to do just before we actually test this out is I would like to create a start function so a private void start is going to do the job make sure you type this in correctly this is a callback from unity and I'm simply going to, to do uh, pause menu dot set active to false so this way whenever we boot the game we actually hide the pause menu because we're not we're not actually on pause okay let's press play on this and have a look at what it does so a uh, pause menu has not been assigned so we're going to go on our level manager make sure you drag and drop your pause menu right inside of the empty game object field here and then we're going to press play again see if this works and here we go now we press on pause it's back up we press again and it it is down basically so that's pretty much working if we press on on the main menu we go back to our actual main menu so level one pause we go back main menu and we are back all right guys so that's a good start for our game flow we're also going to add some more button in there uh, a little bit later on the one i'm thinking right now we could be adding it right away actually is uh, a resume button so a simple resume button that's going to be simply resuming the button so we're going to have two ways to do this uh, either press on the pause button up here to go back to the game or press on the big resume button that we're going to have around here so if you want to do it right away all we have to do is simply duplicate this uh, I'm going to rename that for resume button and inside of our unclick event I'm going to change that for toggle pause menu now if we press play actually I'm going to change the text as well so put that on resume and now if we play pause resume and here we go all right okay so that's going to be pretty much it for this uh, UI of course it's not final and we haven't done just doing the heart yet but that is a good that's a good beginning and we can actually go back and forth uh, from our menu to our game so this is pretty much what we want for now and then we can tackle the heart we can be putting a nice UI panel around that and we designed ourselves making some nice buttons too, displaying the time we've been in the game all that kind of good stuff a little bit later on as always so um, I'm not actually going to end this video here I'd like to actually get the scene ready for the next episode in which we are going to start coding the movement of the player in you know just just the, the three C they call it so the character the control and also the camera all of these things are going to be taken care of in the future episode and I'd just like to get our scene uh, ready for that so I'm going to start by creating a really simple plane and if we take a look at our plane this is it right here I have uh, centered it I'm going to make it a little bit bigger so 5 by 5 by 5 and this is going to be pretty much it okay so that is going to be our floor now I'd like to create a um, a debug material so I'm going to create myself a new folder inside of our unity project 
This one is going to be called artwork and inside of there I'm going to create another folder that's going to be uh, the, going to be called material. And of course inside of that create a new material. And I'll call this one debug mat. Oh not matty, debug mat. Okay, and I'll simply drag and drop this on my new plane. Now let's assign a texture to that. So inside of albedo, I'll be choosing uh, we could be putting our our player texture that'd be actually that'd be actually cool looking, but I'll be putting the default checker instead. So that default checker here it is. We are going to give it a small color so we can actually see uh, the checker itself and it's it's fairly hard to see actually. So I'll just leave it on uh, some kind of gray like that. Okay. Okay, we can see a little difference, but it's not uh, it's not really easy to see. So basically, here's our plane. Now we are going to drag and drop a player inside of here. So if you remember a little bit earlier on, we had uh, our player made so we can actually display the the color of our player. Now we are going to take that same player that we save under the prefab and we're going to drag it inside of our scene. Now let's make sure it is somewhere uh, it can actually spawn. And let's go ahead and clean it up a little bit. So uh, this guy has a sphere collider. I think we're going to keep it actually. And we are going to add a rigid body to this very character. Now if we press play on this, we should see him falling. All right, so that's a good start. And I think that's actually going to be pretty much it for this episode, guys, because the next step is to start coding the actual movement, and and uh, we can be doing that in the next episode. So, guys, thanks again for watching. Um, if you have any question or comment, please go ahead and leave them in the comment section below. I try to answer as soon as possible, and uh, sometimes I don't because I don't quite understand your question. So, if you have any, if you have a question that you'd like to ask in the comment section below, just Make sure you include as much information as possible, maybe copy paste some of your code, maybe I can help you with that. And uh, yeah, so that was just a small note on the side here. Alright guys, so if you enjoyed this video, please leave me a like, I really appreciate it. And also subscribe for more tutorials like these. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next episode.